Hi everyone, I'm Marie and the festive fairies are here with me today because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Happy Wednesday y'all wherever you are and in some cases it's Thursday there in Australia. Thank you all so much for being here and some of you for staying up late because today we are needle felting fun and festive cozy little ornaments. It's such a fun project. We're going to look at turning them into not just ornaments but maybe a gift tag or topping a present with them or maybe even um, uh, turning them into a little gift card. Super duper fun and oh so easy. So if you've been here before you know how it works in the description there is a link to supplies. There is a kit for today. You don't have to have it. We're going to show you how you do this project but there are um, patterns available with the kit. So if you want to grab that in the supply uh, link after we finish the live. So thank you all for being here. Uh, we have friends tuning in from all over the world. We wanna say hi, everyone's saying hi in the chat over here. So if you participate in the live chat or if you're watching the replay, you can comment down below and you get entered to win prizes. So first I'm gonna start off by saying hi to a few folks who are already here. Hi to Marsha in Minnesota. Hi to Dara and Noelle's also in Arizona, though not in the same place, I think. Hi to Kat in Pennsylvania and Dawn in Michigan. Hi to Christine. We don't know where you are. Hi to Deb in Canada. Um, hi to Mario. I hope I'm saying that right in the Netherlands. And we also see a friend in Russia, but I can't pronounce your name. So spell it out for us so we can get it right. And hi to Sammy. Hi to Fiona all the way in Australia. Everyone, thank you so much for being here today and just making our Wednesday fun. We hope you'll grab a Christmas sweater if you don't have one on already. Fill your mug with something delicious because we're going to have fun needle felting together. In the chat, you can share your own ideas, uh, ask a question, whatever you like. That gets you entered to win prizes as well as commenting down below, telling us your favorite takeaway or whatever. So we have two prizes to give away from last week's commenters post live and that is Chris Roy and Katrina Becker. Thank you so much for your comments on last week's show. You win a Mr. Fiddles kit, this little guy right here, or if you already have him, you can choose one of our other ones like Storybook Bunny or Sweet and Simple Fox. So we're excited to needle felt with you today and the fairies oh so festive and magical are all lined up and have some goodies to share with you that you might use for today's project or just to kick your holiday decorating off the first up is the lovely fairy Anne. Yay! Yay! hey everybody thank you so much for spending this time with us wherever you are whatever time it is we're so happy now to be into the holiday projects and uh getting to getting to wear the holiday bling so happy right now um so we're making some christmas sweater ornaments or christmas wear ornaments today and um we do have a full kit available in a one-click option it's gonna come with all of these gorgeous colors of course we got the bright white CX2 and then it's gonna come with a red green blue and then a couple of uh, some some black and some orange if you want to make a snowman face uh, you're gonna have some strings so if you want to hang your ornaments or attach them as a gift card it's also gonna come with some felt fabric to use as a base this is available in the through the link in the description below or on our website under the needle felting section. Thank y'all so much. Next up is Fairy Trish. Yay! Yay! Ho, 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 y'all. <laughs> this is our 2D needle felted fox. It's the next level up from today's project and it's a great transition into animal or pet portraits. It teaches blending of wool and how to needle felt fur. Next up, Fairy Alyssa. <laughs> Hello, I'm so excited to share this Christmas project. I have the I'll Be Known for Christmas pillow cover project. You get to, it's so much fun because you get to pick the felt color in the back and it comes with two different patterns so you can just pick whichever you like. And we do have a video on this on our website under the learn tab and you'll learn on that video how to transfer images onto, oh, I'm sorry, onto a darker um, fa fabric color. And you'll also learn how to do this awesome, cute little Christmas tree. Okay, up next is Fairy Kayla. Yay! Hey everybody, Fairy Kayla here. I just wanted to share with you one of our awesome holiday kits. This one is our home for the holidays. 
So this kit, you either have the option to make a super cute little pillow or a sign here. It comes with two options for the felt fabric, a white or a charcoal gray. And it is awesome for kind of, I don't know if you can see it from there, but how clean those lines are on the words. It is an awesome kit for helping with that as well. So super fun, super festive. Festive question for everybody. <laughs> what did one snowman say to the other? What, what did, did one snowman say to the other? Do you smoke carrots? <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn it back over to you, Marie. Oh, thank you. Can I just see a big round of hearts for the fairies? Oh, I love, love, love their humor and their style and everything they do. So that's our crew. Those of you who don't know us, welcome to the live show. Please say I'm new. We are Living Felt based in Central Texas, but as you can see in the chat, we have friends all over the world. We're grateful for every one of you, absolutely. And the fairies are our crew. They pack your orders, answer the phones, answer your emails, and make everything we sell. And in some cases, they even design our projects. So the one that Kayla just showed you and today's project. So the last one was completely designed by Holly and today's project were absolutely designed by Holly. She's going to be um, partnering with me today in needle felting. She brought in these adorable sweaters and we immediately pounced on them <laughs> and said, well, we have to make them. So um, Holly is here with me today. We're going to turn overhead and get set up and show you this is what we're going to be making. So I hope you guys will get ready. Cool. All right, thank you all so much for being here. We're, we're watching you um, check in and Holly and I are going to be needle felting together. And here I am with the lovely Miss Holly. Hi everyone. Thanks for being here, Holly. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the camera. <laughs> you can you can come in. With my over. reindeer antlers. <laughs> I'll scoot over. So we're going to try and drive uh, sitting here today, and we hope that you'll get your stuff together. Now we're going to show you. Let's look again real quick. These are what we're making today. Um, these sweaters are needle felted with our MC1 batting, which Anne showed. Yes, mm -hmm. they are. That's I just was sitting around and I decided I needed to, um, I was feeling a little nostalgic because my daughter and I used to always make ugly Christmas sweatshirts. Aww. So I decided to try to make ugly Christmas sweater <laughs> ornaments, but they didn't turn out ugly, they turned yeah. out cute. <laughs> Adorable. She brought them in like we immediately knew we had to do them. So we're going to show you what to gather uh, to needle felt these ornaments and then show you how we put them together. So I will stack these off to the side and showed you basically the stuff. Uh, give that to you, Holly. Um, we are working with our MC1 batting in a variety of colors, and it really just takes a little bit. We're gonna be working with 100% wool felt sheets, and as Anne showed in the kit, I think we're doing white and then a green, the yes. hunter the hunter green. And um, then of course we have our jingle stuff from last time. So we'll just put this out here for you real quick so you can see. So we have our wool, we have our jingle stuff, and we have some um, felt sheets get those things together. The other couple of things you're going to want are um, like some, your felting supplies of course, some needles, felting needles, and then we're gonna be using a hot glue gun today um, so that we can do it quickly. You can use regular fabric glue if you're patient to let it dry. Um, we're or, not messing around. <laughs> yeah, do we have our instruction paper? What did I do with Where that? I put it on the table, that's okay. So in the instructions, what we have for you, I think this is here, I'll show you everything. We're gonna show you the little patterns that um, come in the kit. And what we did is just, you get all of these patterns on one page. So they will all fit on one page and do we have, we don't have white felt in here, or and the pen, we have this. The pen is in the, here, we have we a little have cutouts that. of okay. the felt already. Okay, so how we did now, I saw some people saying that we were doing cookie cutter ornaments today, or thought we were doing cookie cutter ornaments today, um, but what we did is we cut out our individual patterns from the paper, because that way you can do whichever ones you want. And then we just used a pen, and I like using, I'll show you the pen I used. We just used a pen, I like these Faber-Castell pens. I journal with these, do you ever use these pens? I haven't, but I use them to cut out these little 
these, yeah. these guys. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I think I need yeah. like a supply of this. They write, they, they write on the felt really well. So you don't even have to use much pressure. Like if you were going to, you know, just top or like try and plan your little adornments. So these Faber Castell pens is what I use. It's just like a basic felt pen, I guess, but I use them to journal. And so we just traced around our shapes onto the white felt and then cut them out with very sharp scissors. So once you get these done, then you're gonna have these little shapes left. Cool? It's like woolly paper dolls. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like woolly paper dolls. Very cool. Okay, so we're going to do our best, Holly and me together here, and um, read your um, comments and questions as we go. And here we are. Okay, so Lisa says she just bought a Christmas tree and she wants to put it up. <laughs> That's what we did well, on Monday. We put up the tree um, on Monday. On Monday. Yeah. I'm doing my own at home tonight or this weekend. You are. I'm, I'm giving... I'm just throwing it to the wind here. We're just going to do Christmas for a long time. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so I dropped our foam already. Okay, so we're going to get our needle felting foam here. Holly and I are going to um, needle felt together and show you a couple of things. And what are you needle felting, Holly? What am I? I can do... Are you going to work I on a sweater? Do, I can do a sweater. Okay. Um, and then here's our wool. Okay. Hopefully that's not too obnoxious for y'all's way. And I'm going to work on, on the mittens a little bit, and then we'll also maybe look at the beanie. So this is the wool. You're going to pull your wool out of there? Then yeah, I'll, I'm I'll trying move to decide out of, of uh, how Christmassy I want to be. I think I'm going to go with the, um, <laughs> the fern. I'm not quite as quick as you. We'll see if I finish my sweater. Well, <laughs> that's okay. All right. I'm getting this plugged in here. I'm plugging in my, my glue gun, y'all. We have all these fun colors in the kit and you can do all kinds you can make a cute christmas sweater or you can you can do an ugly christmas sweater mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so gloria says where can we get the pen i think you can just order it on on amazon i think you can just order the pen on amazon so holly and i are going to get ourselves up here a little more in the suit so we're each going to show you basically the goal when we needle felt these is to do a hundred percent coverage of the felt so we are going to uh, using the batting that we have and holly's using fern green and i have vintage red here we're going to do a hundred percent coverage of whatever part of that design you want it doesn't need to be overly thick but it can be as thick as you want this is the natural thickness i'll go ahead and just uh, piece on here how much I'm gonna pull off this end so this is our MC1 batting if you don't have this use what you have but I'm just going to pull off more than I need to cover my little mitten I think it was a little um, conservative when I pulled off my fern I might need some you more. need more <laughs> yeah especially the way I felt so well, you see that one sweater is pretty thick <laughs> what's nice about the MC1 is you can always patch it in uh, you can always patch it in. It patches in so easily. And I'll, ha I'll have this over here if you want more. And then our pin cushion of choice today is our Snow Village. Is that what we call it? Snow Village. It is a Snow Village. Snow yes. Village, yes. Designed for us by Kimberly Tsar. Uh, this is a kit in the shop. You could make a little Snow Village. And I love the Snow Village. Yeah. We're using 40 triangles and 42 triangles. So yellow and green. And we might pull out our pins too so we can look at how we do stripes and stuff. So oh fun because I'd like I I started off with some stripes yeah, and then I'm gonna I, I put stopped. These guys. <laughs> you did. I did. I'm gonna put the mittens up here. But okay, I did tackle the joy. So <laughs> yeah. So Holly's Holly's a sign maker. Just so y'all know. So she's the queen of letters. Maria's not. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna turn this over and see. Like I don't need all this extra here. But the one tip I have for you is you want the wool to extend past the shape. Otherwise, then the edges show, and that just doesn't look very clean. And that's all we want is for them to extend past the shape, whatever part you're going to do. And I think Holly's going to have, you're going to have like a green body and a red sleeve. I think I might. Okay. Um, oh, so Scott Shattuck says, using MC1 right now to needle felt a hat, to wet felt a hat, and it's working great. That's awesome because MC1 does wet felt very well. We use it a lot for needle felting. And notice that when we apply the fiber that we're just kind of using the same method you would as if you were applying shelf paper and that's starting at one end and moving to the other instead of jumping around. And if you have like, see if you have a join here yeah. and you have a sharp line, then you just want to pull it out, just tease it out like that so it blends. That's all you need to do. Okay, 
So we're just gonna tack this down. And do go, if you go a little bit past uh, the shape, then you'll be setting yourself up for good success for wrapping it around. Um, Vicki says, I made these for my daughter-in-law. I made winter clothes and put them on a small tree. That sounds so cute, a small tree. Yeah, and then we'd have to make minis, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're still trying to fill up our big tree. Right? Mm -hmm. But lots of gift ornaments on there. Sharon says she loves the snow village. Marie says, can this be done on both sides? So Marie, if you try and needle felt this on both sides, what happens is you do poke through, poke through, poke through. So you can, um, but you can also glue the two together, glue two sides together. It is a little challenging to get it to match. And what you'll find when you flip it over, like now we're gonna do it on this side. So if you're gonna do both sides, go ahead and flip it over and then just fill in just the area that's that's empty, if you know what I mean. So now I'm just wrapping over with a fold, and when you get up here, you don't wanna create a hard fold, so pull it before you get it all sunk down. You don't need to pull gobs across the back. You, know, you want it to be fairly flat, because we're just covering the back. We're gonna cover the back with a, a solid, a solid felt. You could glue these together if you want, like this, in which case you might want that inner felt to be a matching color, or you could not, not use an inner felt and just put those two together just like that. Oh, we're not overhead. Oh, goodness. This is what happens when I'm trying to. I'm so oh. sorry, y'all. I feel so bad now. And I'm so, I'm trying to not poke my usually, finger. <laughs> usually, somebody else is watching the camera. We got both me and Holly in here. Okay, so I better back up now. We better back up, Holly. Okay. We've, we've bonked this. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry, I was just trying so hard not to poke my finger. See, we're looking at the <laughs> we're looking at the cue up camera. Okay, so y'all forgive us. And nobody said, okay, so here we are, we're overhead and y'all are behind. Okay, so here we go. Just gonna put as much wool on your piece as you want to cover it. Um, go over the edges and then needle felt it down. So go over the edges and needle felt past the edges. I'm sorry and thank y'all for telling us. Um, I don't know. No, we can't rewind. We can't rewind. We just we just pulled off and we started over. So I wanted to show you that for us on the back we have uh, we have a solid piece of felt covering our back here. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. We thought we were overhead this whole time. Okay. Um, okay. So here we go. Now with this, what I want to do is pull this around and fold it over. And you don't need it to be very bulky on the back side, but you do want to cover the sides of the felt completely. So like this, see how big this is? I don't need that to be that big, so I can pull that off. And um, it just doesn't need to be bulky. This, uh, so Jamie says, are you going to keep the paper inside? This is felt. This is not paper, this is wool felt. So I'm sorry we didn't show you how to do that. We didn't, we forgot to bring our white felt in here, but we traced our shapes around, we traced our shapes onto felt, 100% wool felt in white. What's the size of the pieces? A couple of inches? I don't know, we fit all of the pieces onto one um, page. So you're just gonna have to gauge that by looking at our little hands here. Um, okay. You're live, no rewinding. Yes, okay, everyone says good. They're doing fine. Uh, will the pattern available without the full kit? We can, I think we can get that up. We can put the pattern up without the full kit. Sometimes we get a little, um, I forget to do that. But yeah, we can put the, the pattern up without the full kit. So you'll have to give us a little time after the live show to do that and get that up. But you'll, and then to get to it, what you'll do is just follow the same link in the description here, in the long description, it'll take you there. So what I found here is um, when I'm doing this is when you get around to these edges, you can even needle felt it like down, down towards the foam right there off the edges. And you can switch once you have all of your wool nicely laying down to your fine needle, your 42, and just make it all really nice and flat. So tack, 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 tack. I think I should have done the stocking for this. Uh, 
<laughs> you just needle file. Oh, you know what? You want a devil needle? You want to hold two needles? Oh. Just keep just keep felting over that. there, Holly. Holly, when, <laughs> when Holly catches up, we're going to have her do letters for us. Okay. okay. Holly, Holly will catch up. Yeah. Yeah, Holly's a sign maker, so she's always putting words on stuff. Or I should say, Holly likes words, so she makes I, signs. Apparently I do. Yeah. It's not something I would have ever really thought about. Mm -hmm. Me, I just like really simple things that don't require too much brain power. <laughs> Keep it simple. Okay, so the only difference between this and these is time, and that's time needle felting, needle felting, needle felting. How does Holly put on the arms? I don't understand the question. We're going to fill those in. She's going to fill those in. We'll just fill them in the same way we're mm -hmm. filling in the body, and then just Basically, it'll become like a little seam right here where the green and um, if I get to the red, here. Marie's going to help me. She's this. No, just, just go shallow, just go shallow, just go shallow. Use this. Use, Use that one instead. Okay. Yeah. I think you'll be happy with it. See, this is what, when I'm at home doing this, I don't have anybody to <laughs> just go at it. Maybe that's why it takes me so long. Why? Oh, because I just, I felt and felt and felt and felt and then go switch back and forth. I need to watch more Wooly Wednesdays. <laughs> Okay, so this one, if you have a little thin spot, like right here, don't leave it, just patch it. With this, all you have to do is grab a little patch, and if that's too thin, just stack it. That's kind of the magic of the MC1. Patch it right over the edge, just like that, so you can fill it in. You'll be happy that you took the time to patch it in and get it all nice. And then fold that over the back. Mandy says she's a slow felter too. Yeah, I like to take my time too. But sometimes it helps just to switch your tools up. Mm -hmm. Now notice that we're not trying to attach it to the foam um, for those who are new. Flipping back and forth really does help. And um, our felt is a little, has a little bit of collection of white fibers on it. What you can do if your felt's a little like that is you can felt, you could put a little felt sheet behind it and it's likely to you know pick up less fibers of another color so remember that you can put a little barrier down onto your foam so that you pick up less stuff can you hand broider onto these after yes um, you can um, and I would say just felt them super duper duper well and when you get to the embroidery do it next before you put a backing on it so you just want it really really well felted before you do the embroidery that's the key thing um, you want it very very flat otherwise when you go to pull your stitches then uh, they'll either need to be loose to match the looseness of the wool or um, they're gonna pull taut and you'll see them, you know, depressing the wool. So get it really nice and flat. So with mine, what I would do is use that uh, tool that Holly has there, but I'm gonna put my white on next. I'm gonna put my white right on the bottom. So I'm gonna show you how to do stripes and how to do the heart. And Holly's gonna show you how to do the lettering. And all of the patterns, which we'll grab in just a minute, uh, so or we'll show you, we have them here. The patterns are all done on top of the wool, so there's no way to give you a pattern to do that. So you're gonna have to freehand it. And in the, in the patterns in the kit, and I'm just dropping that on there, you can make them scalloped. I scalloped them like this, or you can just make them fluffy. Both looks really cute. Um, you're just gonna have to freehand them. And I think that's fun because you're just gonna start with little blank templates and you could put on them whatever you want. Um, Ruben says that they made the gray cushion that Alyssa showed a couple of years ago and can't wait to get it out for Christmas again. Loves that design. Yeah, that was really fun. It was really fun to make. And we, we showed even how to finish the pillow as well, if we have a video on that too. So again, I this part you can even leave fluff, fluffy if you want, and then I'm gonna fold this all over to the back. Oh look, Holly's making progress over there progress. on her sweater. Okay, Holly, why don't you fill in one sleeve and then we'll jump to the other. Okay. And we'll jump to the other Could one. You please so. pass me some oh, red. Oh, want? A little red. bit of red, please. Vintage okay. red, please. See, we get to have an ornament party. Just the two of us. <laughs> All right. I don't uh, think I've ever felt it with anybody before. You have felt it with me. I have felt it with you. And your daughter, right? Oh, yeah. Before I even worked here. You we did? We did the fairy tale pumpkin kit. 
Oh. I came in and bought it, and we did the fairy tale pumpkin kit. That's really cute. I don't think I knew that. It was that was gosh. She was only in second grade, and she's a freshman, so wow. <laughs> it was a while ago. <laughs> And thank you all so much for being here. I just think that there's so many things you can do with these fun little ornaments. So here's my little mitten and he needs uh, finishing, that's for sure. So this one, I'm gonna jump to this one that I've already been working on. He's a little more flat, he's a little more felted. And if you want to scallop these edges here, you can. You can just scallop them like while they're poofy like that. Uh, the top is kind of poofy and then just scallop them down. It doesn't really require much more thought. And if you already need a felted just flat, well then just put on another strip of wool and scallop them around. What you see is about someone who asked about doing them two-sided. What you see is sometimes a little of this creeps into down here from the back. A little bits do and they'll poke through the white. So decide if you're going to go for a high level finish and, and cover that up or, or leave it you know just like it is. So for these little guys, I just, it's very easy. Everything is free-handed. And um, Holly's just filling in her sleeve, as you can see. I'm gonna right get there. there. Yeah, she's just getting there. <laughs> okay, so for these, I just pull a little wisp and I don't really think about, the, I mean, don't fuss over this. This is, they're, they're meant to be whimsical. They're meant to be playful. I'm going to use the yellow, I mean, the yellow needle, which is a 42 triangle. And this is a very wiry white. This white is very wiry. Uh, uh, it's our CX2 winter white. So it's the whitest we have, but it's a slightly different nature than the MC1. Um, so you just kind of have to deal with that if you want the white. But when you get to the very end here, where it's kind of sticking up, you can just twirl it around the end of your needle and then poke it down. So to make those little shapes. What did Devin say? Devin said, love to put the bells on the gnome hats. Very cute. Oh, Janlin can't see what you're doing over there. Oh, Can you I'm come sorry. in a little bit? There I keep go. migrating this way. I yeah. keep moving it and I keep migrating. Okay. So I'm going to put a little arch on these here. Again, just pick a spot. Tack, tack down the arch as you go. It's meant to look like a, almost like a chalk chalk line this and it's meant to almost look like a little chalk line not too strong I did try a plaid earlier this year it was not very successful and it took forever so I've decided against <laughs> that would be so fun but it, yeah who has time for that yeah it takes a long time okay this one is very messy I have to pull it out and start over um. <laughs> Is CX2 a shorter fiber? No, it is not a shorter fiber than MC1. It's more wiry, it's got less crimp uh, to it, but it's not It's not shorter than MC1. I think MC1 is shorter than CX2, really. Um, it is, but it's it's also just, it's, it's much straighter. It doesn't have the same crimp. Okay, so this is not the high level of finish that I love, but I spend a lot of time just getting this like all needle felted down and all the white off and everything. Let's do a quick little heart. And Holly, we're going to jump you. Here's okay. Holly. Oh, look. How, look oh, how, look, it's like look the, the magic of well, Wally Holly, Wednesday. Good job, Holly. <laughs> um, please make me some ornaments for holiday apartment. I celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas. Oh, yeah. Please send me some. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so to make a heart, this is about as as uh, detailed as I start. I start with a clump, and I'm going to just start in what's the middle of the heart, just like this, and just shape the wool as I go around. This is what I do. I'm just going to shape it. Usually, though, my head would be in the way because I sit right on top of my work. You know, I find that's I the hardest like, thing right now is I am right on top of my yeah, work. Yeah, you like. want to be right on top of it, but you can't be because nobody wants to look at the back of your head. I don't know. I have reindeer antlers on them. <laughs> they are cute. <laughs> now, when you get to the bottom, so right there, you get to the bottom, the easiest thing to do sometimes is just to trim it off. Or if you feel like you can shape it, you can shape it. I usually like to do the heart in two halves. Um, so this is kind of messy, but I'm going to do two halves to my heart as opposed to trying to bend it around and make it do what I want. So half one and then half two. It's not paper, it's wool felt sheets, yes. Um, 
What about using merino top for the decoration? Well, needle, needle felting merino top isn't quite as easy. That's all I can say. You could use it if you want, but it doesn't, it doesn't quite needle felt as well as these fibers. These fibers are a little more coarse and they lend themselves a little better because merino top has been straightened out so much um, that all the fibers are aligned and it's just a little more of a challenge. Okay. And Holly's going to jump start in on here. My, on yeah. my letters. Holly's going to start in. So Holly, tell us, they're, they're seeing this heart thing, but tell me what are you, okay. tell us tips on your letters over there. You come in a little closer. Okay. There you go. So I'm just going to do Joy, and on my other one that I, I did with Joy, I just sort of winged it. I didn't plan it out a whole lot. I just kind of, you know, it's three letters. I started with the O, actually, because it was right in the middle, and then I, would, I knew I would have enough space for the Y and the J. And I kind of took a little, a, like a thin strip, if you will, of the MC1. And I sort of, I twisted it a little bit because I want, I don't want my letters too thick. And then I just started kind of in the center there and just kind of anchored it in. And then what I did was use this strip and I, I made my O and then I went back and like made it tighter. So, gotcha. So the O oh, starting with the O oh in the middle is a great tip. Yeah, so that you can make sure you you know you're not too off center, um, or if you are, you can add a little decoration. Um, so I just kind of, like I said, just did this really lightly, and when I met it up there, then I'm just kind of kind of use my needle and kind of go back over where I already went in and make my O a little bit thinner because it's it's still a pretty thick piece of wool. I just kind of use my needle to... Guide it. To guide it, thank you. I was okay. like, what is that right word? Um, coax, coax, cajole, guide. I was gonna use manipulate, but that sounded a little <laughs> harsh. <laughs> uh, I mean, and like this one, um, I think he's, he's kind of cute a little bit of a chunkier O. Yeah. But it gives you it gives you some some options. Um, if you if you like it thinner, you can just keep manipulating it, coaxing it <laughs> with your. So that one's pretty thin, but you can just keep coaxing it with your with your needle and just keep going around and around. I'd say I'm probably a pretty hard felter, so I spend a lot of time felting because I'm like I could get this better, and I just keep my my right. ornaments are pretty thick. <laughs> <laughs> now, and now Norma asked, can you sketch the letters first? But sketching onto this felted wool is really not all that easy. It's not. If you do it's an like, easy word like joy or something, I think that you could manage without without sketching yeah. it. Yeah. I, I did not. I mean, I usually paint. Is So me needle felting the little tiny letters like that, I was actually pretty impressed with myself. <laughs> I was like, good job, Holly. <laughs> good job. We should tell ourselves good job more often. Right? Mm -hmm. I know. I need to practice that. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so there's my O, and it's right in the center. Or Yay. pretty close. And I'm going to do the same thing with the J. I'm going to get like a, a strip of my, um, of my MC1. That one's a little bit... Thick. And you can always, if you know you you, you do a, a letter and it's a little bit thinner, you can always add back in. Yeah. So I'm going to anchor it again, like at the top, where the top of my J would be. I hope you all can see that. And I, I was not really precise about, you know, do all my letters need to be exactly the same height. Right. I wanted it to be kind of like, I don't know, just kind of playful. So I just kind of went down until yeah. I got to the point where I wanted my J to, That's as long smart. as I wanted my J, and then kind of anchored it again a little bit. And right. Then used my little, my finger. Yeah. And went back up and a hook. So it kind of, it looks like a J now, but it's not, definitely not secured. And then I just sort of, you know. That's kind of the same way. You get to the next point and then connect the points and then yeah. you smooth out the point. It's like now, felty connect the dots. Yeah, and now Devin gave a good tip and said that um, sometimes she tacks out the the outline with a coarse needle. Oh, that's a good idea. That huh? is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Now I might push some of your wool around. It depends on the depends on the the landscape that you have working on. So if it's tiny and your piece is only partially felted, well, you'll find as soon as you drive that coarse needle in there that you're shifting the landscape. You know, so um, get it all really felted well first before you go driving your your coarse needle in there. 
Mm-hmm. Now yeah. I've used this. Now I've made it all messy. But so I had just I'm had my joy. Anyway. If you saw, was a little. I felt like it was a little small, so I just added a little tiny piece in to kind of bulk it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna move on to the Y. And it's the same thing. I actually did a very um, like I don't. I want to call it an elementary school Y, where instead of how I would paint it, I was one big long. Um, stretch first and then or I guess a lowercase y is what I'm looking for that one, I think I got whoops a little too much wool there let's let's backtrack my white Ruben says I can't believe how perfect your letters and hearts are <laughs> <laughs> that's sweet yeah that looks really good though yeah, I like the elementary school Y. Yeah, yeah. And I'd say like if you're a little afraid of trying the little letters, this was the little. These were the smallest letters I've ever done. While I did do that home sign, those were bigger, chunkier letters for sure. And I was just like, what the heck? I'm just gonna try the joy and see if it works. Yeah, and I did. I like it. I'm normally an overthinker on that kind of thing, but I was like, nope, just gonna do it. So my thoughts are, just do it. Kathy says you should put holly on the front of the sweater. <laughs> we do have a holly jolly uh, banner, right? Oh, we, we do. We have a holly jolly banner. We'll show that another time. We do have a holly jolly banner that holly designed. Yes. Um, yes, this is a good good project as an intro to felting. And I think it would also make a really good like family holiday party kind of thing to do. Oh, my gosh. It'd yeah. be so fun. I was yeah. trying to, I was thinking like I should have some, have my family come over. Or convince my son and my husband to try it. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. I know what we're like, doing over mm-hmm. Thanksgiving mm-hmm. break. So there, I just connected my Y. Got it anchored into my two points. Love it. Eh, he's a little wonky, but that's okay. I can fix him. I love it. Joy. It's adorable. Yes. Very cute. So, I mean, he's... I love it. He's a little he's a little crooked, but, like, I would probably put, you know, maybe, I don't know, you could put a jingle bell or yeah. a little snowflake. snowflake on there. Yeah, he's cute. A Here's a, a simpler one, like a little Santa. That came from our little bling, our, our jingle pack. That's so cute. A simple one. Holly's snowman. Very simple. And the pattern, uh, we at least drew him out so you could... You could at least look at him while you're deciding, you know, how, how to draw him. Here's another one with Holly. She just freehanded that one. Here's a, it, with the kit does come with blue and we hadn't made anything with blue. So I started doing a little beanie with blue. And we just want to show you how to get like some of these stripes. This is a technique we've uh, shared before. So Holly showed you how to do the letters and I showed you how to do the swoopies on the mitten and how to do a little heart. Um, dots are easy too, which I think we probably can show on this guy too. But let's show you um, how we do these little zigzags or what, what would you call them? It's not a chevron, but uh, it's like a Charlie Brown. Yeah. Kind of. um, I love the blue too. It's a great addition. To, uh, so should this be green or red? Ooh, red? I like red. Okay, red. We're all red, red, red. Okay, so <laughs> let's show you like how to do these these little stripes, how we do them. So you're going to take your fiber and just pull off a little, a, go for a longer strip and you don't have to be overly exact about what kind of shape that is. And we're going to draft it out just like um, Holly did on those letters, kind of draft it out to some point. And this is all fluffy here. In fact, I'm going to leave it a little fluffy. It's kind of cute, right? It's kind of cute, fluffy. I'll go this way since I'm sitting here uh, backwards. Um, uh, okay, so I'm going to start up here at the top and just anchor it down somewhere starting with the anchor point. And then I like to do at least two other points. So using a little pin or glass head pin, if you can see that, I'm going to pull it down to where I think the point is. And you can plan the whole thing out. Um, And if you tilt it back a little bit, it'll be a little more like you think it's gonna be. And then use your pins to see how you like that little triangulation. You don't have to have them all in, but it might help you plan it. Um, so that you decide, like I always go too wide. Visually, I'm challenged, <laughs> so I'm not very good at making things even. Uh, I'm pretty much lopsided. 
Okay, so Don Ward is asking if you can roll it in your hands a little bit or if it's best not to do that. I mean, I rolled mine a little bit, but I, I don't know if it was I don't necessarily do it because I, I know that with this, I still want to draft a little bit, and I tend to draft it out. I tend to draft it thinner or as thin as I want it rather than rolling it, but that's just me because it's a little, it is a little harder to needle felt it once it's rolled, but in this way is how you could plan your stripes. So you certainly could, and you see how wonky mine is, but I like, oh, okay. I like this arch and this arch and this one I'll come back and fix and now I'll start needle felting it right here it just to help you plan how to get it in place you can just rip this off let it go around the back or whatever and now the reason I don't roll it is because now I can make it as thin or as thick as I like and you can if you like this arch here kind of like Holly did is I then needle felt this point up here and then come back and grab what's in the middle like that and I was going to drive some of you crazy that my lines are crooked but I think it's charming that way and I love this pin trick I don't know what I've done without that my whole life I could have even used that on the joy if if a little you, bit, if you, you map know, if you map if you your mapped it out points, a little bit that's a good idea you could maybe anyway anyway but you can definitely wrap it uh, you can definitely roll it if you want to but this is how I get those lines and how I control where they go just like that okay so that's how you get these lines what we're gonna do is jump to how you uh, how you uh, finish these guys like what to do what to do next so why don't we pick um, Holly's sweater since it's the next most complete and we're gonna scoot this other stuff out of here, right? And we'll take a couple of these back that are already done. Um, and we're gonna turn them into uh, finished. So we'll get rid of this guy, Holly. I'll take mm -hmm. this. We'll just take the whole foam out of here. Okay. Yeah, we don't need the foam anymore. Okay, cool. I'll get rid of this. Okay, so to finish our pieces, I have my glue gun over here working. And what we're going to do is we mount them onto a felt, but we like to bring in our ribbon or however you're going to hang them at the same time. Um, oh, actually, we can do this guy. He's he's all ready, actually. Okay, so we'll do our we'll do our beanie to show you. So you can pin your ribbon or thread or whatever you want. Uh, should we do this or this? One of these or that? Ooh. Or we have green too, but we have a lot of green in here. What do we choose? I go for the red. Go for the red ribbon? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So the red ribbon's already in place. If you want to add jingle bells or anything, add them, you know, to this right now, unless you're going to sew them on. If you are going to do embroidery, if you're going to put, you know, a child's name on here or something. What a cute idea. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Do it now. But do it now before you finish it off. So any adornments, now is a good time for it. And then just for speed, I use the glue gun here. And you want to save your felt, so don't do it right in the middle. Uh, but the glue gun is really good at attaching things quickly. And I think I probably need this a little bit higher. I just pinned it back here. And for this ribbon, you know, I hate when, or I shouldn't say hate, but you know when you put an ornament on and it spins and it always spins crooked? I think, you know, yeah. this way, if you do it this way so that you have this good join and this loop like this, then when you go to put it on the tree, it'll hang straight like that and, yeah. as opposed to just being loop-de-doop. -doop. That it's drives amazing. me... It makes a huge difference. Yeah, it drives me kind of bonkers. So when they always spin out of the way. So just for the moment, I'm going to pin this down so that I have it in place and see if my glue gun... Oh, yes, yeah, stretchy all the way across. I don't use a glue gun all that often, but I found for this project that it helped because it was really quick. So then I'm just gonna press that down, and as soon as that's dry, which is gonna be a red hot minute, <laughs> um, I will take my pin out. I'm all sticking to myself. So you see Brenda has a question about no. the lettering. Um, back to, if you were gonna do two colors, like white around the red, how would you, I mean, I would probably do the white and then do the red on top. No, I no? would do. Uh, uh, I would do if you were gonna if you were gonna outline <laughs> if you were gonna outline this. I would do this first, and then you're gonna have to trace around the letter. Oh! But this is very <laughs> small to do that. So um, this would be a, that would be a good job for embroidery thread if you embroider. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or glue down felt letters and then needle felt. No, no, no. Uh. Do that separate. Okay, so now we're gonna glue this to our felt. Uh, it's it's just gonna dry much more quickly. But like I said, you can use fabric glue if you want. Um, and I pretty much just glued around, all around the edge, and then uh, just enough so that it doesn't stick out. And if it's a very large piece, then go ahead and 
um, needle felt, I mean, glue like half of it at a time as opposed to trying to do the whole thing at once. Did I get it on there? There. We're gonna be cutting all that away anyway, so don't worry about if any glue is showing. Just let it sit for a second so that you know you have a good adhesion all the way around. Um, okay. So, <laughs> filters have their own language, loop de doop <laughs> Trisha says me and glue don't mix. Um, glue, uh, the glue gun, I have a low temperature glue gun because I don't like to burn myself. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just have a low temperature glue gun here. Now this this ornament is a little bit rough and ready, but that's what happens on the show is we have to go kind of fast. This is why I don't glue all the way to the edge, 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 just because I want to be able to cut this away so that it's kind of invisible. You can have your show if you want and have it be a little more like a background. And when you get around here, just work your way around your little piece. Yeah, that's a cute idea. Like you could have kind of an outline with a felt if you made yeah, it Yeah, you can have a background on it if you want. And I have joined two pieces that I mounted on felt like this before. So like, let's say you wanted to do a two-sided beanie. You could do two beanies um, like this, join them together with glue, and then I trimmed it with ribbon like to hide the join. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, around the, no, that's around great the middle. Idea. So there's our, there's our cute little ornament and these guys too. And we're going to look at just um, doing like how you might incorporate this into gifts or something. Holly brought some yeah, gifts for some us. Gifts. And um, I think that ornaments make a very sweet gift even for people or family members. And you can either use it like on a gift as a gift tag or on a Christmas card even. So we brought a few things for you here. Uh, Holly will use this on one of hers. So let me show you the gift card idea and then we'll wamp them on top of a, a couple of gifts. So I brought with me just, we have a little uh, greeting card. Oh, I mean, we have like a little kit because we did, oh, we, we made some artful yeah. felt fabric. So I have just a little greeting card here. I've already put it on here and ripped it off. So you're going to be able to see that. <laughs> and I just used my white pen in the, in, in the inside. Merry Christmas. And then on the outside, did we bring our tape? We didn't. We didn't but bring the tape, our tape has been disappearing from us like all day. I we don't have tape. I will go around. We need it. Okay, yep. so this snowflake, the jingle bells, and the string are all from our little jingle pack. And so one way you can make this into a greeting card slash ornament slash gift would be to use something like this is the wooden snowflake. Our little jingle packs came with a wooden snowflake. And you can hide it right back here just by pushing it through the snowflake. And then I just taped it right onto the front of the card. Get, get them so they hang like you like. And then you can just tape the string to the front of the card and you don't have to attach it like for permanent. It would just be a way that will allow you to gift it. And then actually you can put a little drop of glue or tape, like double sticky tape, on the back of this. Um, and I think I did glue originally, but um, so that you can then put this, and this actually still fits in the uh, greeting card envelope, these ones, because they're so, they're so thin. But I think what a great way to give someone, maybe someone that you don't necessarily gift to, yeah. but, you could, but that you care about. And I did, myself, I just put a drop of glue on the back of this for mine um, so that it would stay on there but could still easily come off. And it still fits, uh, it fits in there so well. And you may not mail it with a wooden piece, like, you know, right. but if you're gifting a neighbor or a friend at work or something like that. I would be and tickled then, if somebody gave me something yeah, like that. Yeah, That's and fantastic. then Holly brought in some stuff too. So we... You, Really easy if you wanted to attach it to a gift. I mean, you could um, undo your bow and do it from the very beginning, or you can just go ahead and slide it in. You could slide it around the whole bow here. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's so smart. I wouldn't even have thought of that. Slide it around the whole bow. And if you, and put, what a, you could put a little piece of tape on the back if you wanted to to make sure it didn't, oh, you know. This way. We're upside down. Oh. There we go. Yay! <laughs> I like that. And you could even tie, you know, you could tie this again to secure it or a little piece of tape. I think it's yeah, cute. Yeah, you could, in fact, you could cut out the same shape in your cardstock to be the, the gift tag name or oh or make a little, tag, yeah. a little tag off of this that says the name of the person or whatever. 
Yeah, huh. that's so that's cute. That's cute, huh? I, I, know, love what, these. I know what my tree's going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> On it and under it. <laughs> Super fun. So I love these. Uh, these little uh, presents are great, great, great for yeah. name tags. And it's a way to give an ornament and a gift at the same time, or give an ornament and a card at the same time, or you could just wrap the ornament and send one to a friend. I yeah, think they'd be I think it's so fun. Just knowing that it was made by you for them. I've been doing that recently though. I've been just like, oh, I found this little thing for you and I'll just pop it in the mail to somebody and they're just like, oh, I got I got real mail. <laughs> I have a friend who sends me real mail and she hand paints cards and they just come all the time and it's always, always special. Love you, Robin. <laughs> always, always special. Well, that is our show for today. These ornaments, we're going to um, get the PDF up so that you can download it. You have some other, Holly has some other sweaters over there. I did bring, if you wanted to show oh, them thank you. I brought that thank in you. right so this is the thing and so we'll show you get all of the all of the patterns fit on one page and you can always you know if you just want to make a holly snowman sweater well you can just make that over and over and over again and we did we did put a little bit of drawings on there just and there's a, a stocking thrown in the next two so they're super duper fun and we can't wait to see what you make so a couple of things we want to tell you and that is if you make uh, these we hope you'll tag us on instagram uh, that's one of the things holly and i look at all the time is what you make with and we like to share them on our website we have a community page so if you uh, want to visit us we have tons of free tutorials on our site under the learn tab as well as a bunch of supplies if you're interested in that but you can go to the learn tab and we also have a gather tab which is where you can find our various locations and on the gather tab is where one of the places where we share uh, things that you have felted as well as our Facebook group which yep. is just amazing so in our Facebook group is another place where uh, one we get to see what you all are making and two we uh, very often harvest from there uh, as well as when you tag <laughs> us for the newsletter because we love to share what people make in the newsletter so if you want to join our newsletter go to our website scroll to the bottom and put click the button that says get our fun newsletter you want to do that so you know what's happening you know who's our guest gonna be you know what's happening in the school so we have a special announcement for the school we right do. We okay do. so this is a heads up this is coming your way super soon and amidst all this red and green Christmas stuff is this gorgeous hat uh, by my dear friend Dawn Edwards. So Dawn has a new class coming out in the school. If you've been with us for a little while, you know that um, she was here with us, I think in August. She Gosh, was here. Yeah. Dawn's, uh, Dawn's studio is called Felt So Right. She uh, travels the world teaching people how to make hats. And we're so blessed that she's come here. Also, we have two of her hat classes in our school. Would you click the school button for us, Holly? The school button. Um, uh, and this hat class is called Hidden Treasures. Her hat class goes on uh, pre early bird enrollment. November 12th is when we'll start enrollment and the class launches seven days after that, which I think is the 19th. So this is called Hidden Treasures. Look, you could make it blue. You could make it black and gray. You could make it green and blue or brown and whatever, you know, it speaks to you. But you're going to learn how to nano felt a fun hat, how to do these incredible inclusions and lovely textures. And Dawn's gonna show you just everything. She's a superhuman, a fabulous felt maker and a very generous teacher. And she might be watching, hi Dawn. <laughs> If you're watching, we I think love I saw you. her name. <laughs> yeah. So November 12th, her class goes on for Early Bird. And again, that is in our school uh, right here, feltingtutorials.com. Is there anything else we have for today that we want? You know what? We wanted to ask. Uh, we're going to give away prizes right now. So we wanted to ask, though, if you've watched us, if you've shopped with us, if you've taken a class in our school, if you would consider um, maybe leaving us feedback on Google. Yeah, it's, yeah. Hel it's helpful for everybody. Yeah, yeah, it helps people know to they can come shop with us. So we'd love to hear your feedback if you've taken a class or gotten a free download or something. Do we have names? We do, in, oh. a, in our special hat. We stole it from Fairy Alyssa. So from, <laughs> from all of you in the live chat, uh, we're going to draw names right now. If we didn't answer your question, consider posting it down below. Um, if you had a hot tip and we didn't uh, echo that, oh, this hat is full. I'm going way down, <laughs> way down into the tip of the it's, cone. It's harder than our Leave pumpkin. a comment down below and you will be entered to win a prize next week. And right now we're giving away two. Who do you got there, Holly? I have 
Charlene Green. And I have Lynette Romer. We're going at the top. Hi, one. Yep, Hi, one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, y'all. And thank you all so much for felting with us. We hope you have fun making your cozy little winter ornaments. Uh, follow the link in the description below to get to the supply page. You can also rewatch the video there and see other things that might work. And we'll go get this PDF up on the site for you right now. So thank you all so much. We hope that you have a holly jolly rest of your week. <laughs> Mary, very Mary. Oh, she's starting already. <laughs> <laughs> and we had so much fun decorating the set for the holidays for you. So we hope you like that. And we will see you guys. Oh, not next week, in two weeks. So we have the schedule posted in the yes. Facebook group. So we don't have a show next week, but we have some really super duper duper fun coming in two weeks. So we'll see you then. And next time, until then, happy felting, y'all. Thank you. Bye. Bye.